Discussing heparin drips. We're going to be following the protocol that has been approved by Sierra Vista Hospital. You will want to obtain a copy of the physician's heparin protocol order, an anticoagulant flow sheet, and a copy of the physician's heparin reversal protocol order, and place them on the chart. Keep the anticoagulant flow record on the front of the chart for easy access and to prevent it from getting lost. You'll need to obtain the patient's current weight in kilograms. You cannot rely on a stated weight on admissions. This needs to be accurate. Next, you need to find out if the patient has been on Lovenox. If they have, you have to wait 12 hours before starting heparin, unless the doctor orders otherwise. The protocol order sheet has three separate pathways. It is extremely important that you use the proper one. The first is the one used by MedSurge. It is the protocol for venous thromboembolism. The second is for coronary syndromes such as unstable angina and may need telemetry monitoring. The third is for the patients that will be receiving fibrolytic therapies. Again, patients needing monitoring. For all three pathways, baseline labs are drawn before beginning the infusion. Obtain a PT, PTT, CBC and creatinine. Here is where the pathways diverge. For med search, pathway one is your guide. After the baseline labs have been drawn, you will give a starter IV bolus of 80 units per kilogram. You will multiply 80 units times the patient's weight in kilograms. Then you will start the IV heparin infusion of 18 units per kilogram per hour. To get this, you will multiply 18 units per hour times the patient's weight in kilograms. This will give you the units per kilogram per hour. All pathways will receive the following. All of these are listed on your protocol orders. Number one, CBC daily for the first three days, then every other day during IV heparin administration. Number two, PTT six hours after start of the infusion. Number three, adjust heparin infusions based on sliding scale on protocol order sheets for all pathways. Number four, obtain PTT six hours after each rate change. Five, when PTT reaches therapeutic range and no bolus or change in infusion rate is indicated, order the next PTT for the next AM labs. Six, Make all dose changes as soon as possible. Seven, round off doses to the nearest 0.5 mLs per hour. Eight, patients with platelet counts less than 100,000 mm3s or whose platelet counts have decreased by 50% or more from baseline need to be evaluated by the physician. In other words, notify him. Heparin reversal protocol for IV heparin, one milligram of protamine sulfate Will inactivate 100 units of heparin. Number one, calculate the total amount of IV heparin administered within the preceding two hours. Number two, take the calculated total amount of IV heparin administered and divide by 100. The result is the milligrams of protamine to give IV push. Total amount of heparin in units in the last two hours divided by 100 equals the milligrams a protamine IV push. Now, number three, obtain a PTT level two hours after protamine administration. Note that this is for IV heparin only. Reversal of subcutaneous heparin may require an IV infusion and handled separately.